how many of you still have Sunday night church? Okay. If there's any way, you know, and I know this is a fight to the death sometimes, but if there's any way that you can do away with Sunday night services, I would I encourage you to work toward that because none of you are good enough to preach three times a week. You're not. I'm not. I'm, we're just not that good. And, um, and so one thing that I would say honestly is I would at least begin to pray about that privately to say, Lord, if there's a way, show me how to lead us to free up people's schedule. I don't think, it doesn't make us better. It's not making our churches grow. Nothing is accomplished except it adds a burden to you that you cannot fulfill and it doesn't serve almost anything. And so that would be one, and, it, and I know that's a fight. I get it, so get all the wisdom you can. Ask Tom how to help you do that, you know, and then, don't, and then blame it all on him. But, but I, truly, I think we're trying to preach too many times. Secondly, I would do this. I believe you should be trying to bring somebody along to help you. And so if, if there is someone that you think has a call and some gifting, I would bring them along and train them and give them some opportunity to preach so that you can have a break occasionally. I think that would be wise to do. Plus, it's always nice to eat somebody else's food occasionally, right? And so don't feel like you're the only one. I understand don't give your pulpit away. We do not. Nobody comes into our pulpit and preaches at BRCC. We're very particular about who comes. I've been there 16 months. There has not been a guest speaker yet. How many pastors preach? Uh, three or four. And you're one of them. And I'm one of them. And so don't give, uh, don't give it to just anybody, but get some help. Thirdly, I would say to you, that uh, if you will get, if you will do the hard work of arranging your schedule where you are at least three to four weeks out in your preparation, you will preach better sermons. Because something happens when you work and prep and get stuff together and then you lay it aside and you let it sit. When you get to the week of and that final prep, you're, it's mature in your mind and heart. And something that you had there, the, when you go back and look at it, you say, no, I don't want to say it that way. I want to take this angle on it. And then you've got it, and, you, you know, and you're writing it out. You're getting it there. Also, if you'll work four weeks out and come with the, here's, here's the big idea. Here's what I think I want people to do. And here's what I'm, the so what. Here's why it matters. And you'll gather your worship leader around you and you'll gather your children's director around you and just get a few of your creative peoples, you know, there, then you begin to say, what could we do? What can we do in the parking lot? What could we do that's unique? What songs could we use? Is there, if you have any kind of video, there are a lot of videos in the can. Is there one we could pull up and use? Is there a special way that we could tell the scriptures or read the scriptures? Or what about if, we read the scriptures in Spanish instead of reading them in English. What if we read the scriptures in Arabic and we had an Arab reader come in and read this and we alternated a verse in Arabic, a verse in English, a verse in, you know, and you use, there's different things that you don't have to have a lot of money to do that you can do. Um, Okay, a, a third thing I would say, and I was just going to bring this up, and I think it answered, Tom, I think your question is appropriate. I actually have three points in this sermon, don't I? Mm -hmm. I do. I don't usually have that. What I really have here is a three-point series, a three-part series. And all the work that I did to do in one, I have a lot of the work done to do in three. We want to do a series on what do you need to know to really survive difficult times. Well, there's a three-part series. The first thing you need to know for week number one is that God is always the central f character in every story. And you build a talk around that. You've already done that work. The second week is, is that you need to pay attention to the warnings in your life. The third week is, you want to know what God knows, you've got to walk in God's ways. Mm -hmm. This is not one talk. It's three talks, potentially, with just a little bit more work. 
No, I'm saying that the no, it's in the it's in the God section. When we looked at all three of the characters in the Noah story, they show us something we need to know to survive difficult times. Yeah, it, that's what I'm saying. It could be a three-part series. And, and so you already have a lot of the God section done. All you've got to do is add a me, we, and a you section, and boom, you've got three sermons instead of one. Same work. So um, those are some ways. Sometimes we, we want to say too much in one talk. I, did, I had the assignment to do the Noah fl story in one week, so that's what I got. I didn't get three weeks, but this is really a potential a series, not that we would do it that way, but it is one. So that's the way I would say. Um, we, we work them as a teaching team together. We get together, and here's, what I, here's what's on my heart. Here's what we're doing for the year, and we work that out, the four or five of us together. Usually six or seven. There's usually six, seven, eight people in the room when we're doing that.